Starter Valley 1.6 is absolute insanity. What was supposed to be a small little patch turned into a huge update, and there is so much cool new content for us to explore. I've been playing a little bit here and there, and I've compiled a list of really, really, really cool things that I absolutely love. Probably some of my favorites. And just a forewarning, there are 100% gonna be spoilers in this video, so if you want to experience the game naturally and don't want to be spoiled by me, do not watch this. But if you do not mind or somehow have witnessed absolutely everything that there is to see, uh, which is crazy, I don't know how you did that, Stick around until the end. I also would like to say I haven't made a long form video since I hit 100k on YouTube, so I just want to thank you guys so much for all of your support. It is absolutely insane. I never in a million years ever thought that I would be in this position. As you can see my little play button in the back over there. It's been such a dream truly, and with 1.6 coming out, there will definitely be so much new content, so many new shorts, so much new long form for you guys. I'm really, really, really excited and just thank you once again. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so the absolute first thing that I need to talk about is everything to do with with pets, and I guess animals respectively. But the character creation screen is the first thing that you see. Look at the new cats. Look at the new cats, are you serious? I feel like the original cats kind of look similar, just like in different fonts. But these little dudes got eyebrows. They look angry. And I mean, this white one's cute and all, but the best part, look at the black cat. I have been begging, hoping, and praying that Concerned Ape would add a black cat at some point in Stardew Valley's career. career. Stardew Valley's lifetime. My previous go-to was the little gray cat over here, but I'm sorry, I'm going to have to retire him because we have the black cat now. And I mean, there there are two new dogs too, I guess. I like the little bandana on this one. And this one honestly just looks like a, a recolor of the original dog, but we we all know the correct option, the black cat. We're, we're always gonna run with the black cat. I don't think that I will ever, ever change my at least starting animal. And you might be asking me, why Lumi? Why are you saying starting animal? Because because you can now have multiple pets. I've not tested it to its absolute limit, but but I was able to get a bunch of animals on my farm. By the way, do, do not mind whatever this farm is. This is an old farm that I've been using to test a lot of the 1.6 stuff. So it's just grass at this point. But all you gotta do is head over to Marnie's and you can buy new pets. Now, I believe this does only happen if you have already reached full hearts with your pet. So in previous times, after you spent a lot of time watering the pet bowl and giving him pets, in the morning, you would get a little notification at the bottom that says blank loves you, whatever your pet's name was. But now you can just simply keep track of it. We got quarter over here at full hearts. And once you reach the full hearts, you get this letter in the mail from Marnie that says, Dear Lumi, from what I can tell, you've been taking really good care of your pet. I'm really happy about that. But there are many sweet animals that need a home. If you're interested, I'll start offering pet adoptions at my shop. So straight after I got that letter in the mail, I was able to just head right over to Marnie's and purchase a bunch of pets. In the game files though, there is this pet license. It says invite a new pet into your home. If you don't have enough outdoor pet bowls for your pets, they will become upset. I didn't get this at all. I don't know where you need to get it, but if you have full hearts with your original pet, you can just go up to Marnie's. And of course, probably the most important addition are the turtles. It is a little upsetting that you can't get these as your starting pet. I mean, they are a little extravagant. This one over here is 500K, but I mean, Come look at this guy over here. He's so freaking cute. Even the noise he makes is really adorable. Also, as Marnie was saying in that letter, you'll have to go to Robin's. Where are you, girl? Come on, mommy. I have to show off the new features. I digress. Just like Marnie was saying, you can just head over to Robin's and get some more pet bowls. You can still adopt the pets if you don't have an extra pet bowl, but I mean, do you really want to do that? That's mean. There are a couple of options as well. You have the just normal standard pet bowl, you have this little rocky one, and you have this little hay one. It is a little unfortunate that they cost 25 hard Hardwood. The gold really isn't anything to scoff at, but depending where you are in your game, the hardwood might be a little bit, a little bit much. And you don't even have to wait for it to build. You can just plop it down over here and it's instantly there. You know, I was going to head back to Marnie's to buy a bunch of pets so I can fill my house with cats and fulfill my cat lady fantasy, but she's not around. Whatever should I do? Well, Marnie now sells something called the animal catalog, which I mean, Concerned Ape loves us for this. It is just so good. The fandom is constantly bugging Marnie about how she's never at her shop, always staring at that damn dresser over there like an idiot. But now once you purchase the animal catalog, you can access Marnie's shop when she's not around whenever you want. And now a couple of thousand gold later, my entire house is full of the black cats. And how could I even forget? You can now just put hats on all of them. Another unfortunate thing about the turtles that I didn't mention is you can't put hats on them, I guess because they have like small heads or something like that. One last thing about the animals that I do want to mention, aside from the new animals, Animals tab that is going to be super nice when keeping track of all your animals to see who ate, who didn't, who you pet, how many hearts you have with them, especially your cats. 
and dogs, sorry. You can see that you don't have any hearts with your horse and this little empty box over here. If you go up to your little guy, he'll eat a carrot. I don't really know the purpose. I don't know if it makes him faster or is just a cute little detail that Concerned Ape wanted to add, but it certainly is adorable. Now, a couple of these next ones are going to probably be a tad bit silly, but I mean, I just love them so much. I cannot help but include them. You see this little thing right here, this little bean on the ground? Well, um, the patch notes say that you can now crit a child. And no, I'm not talking about that type of crit. I'm talking about this type of crit. I don't know what it is about Concerned Dave, but he is just the most creative human being on planet Earth. Who wakes up and is like, you know what? I'm going to add to my video game today. Baby crits. Uppies. Ultimate uppies. Up, up, and a ways. It's just a funny detail, and it, it, it seems like a really small chance. I was going at it for a pretty long time until it happened to me, but it's just so hilarious nonetheless. Another thing that I could, I could simply just not stop hysterical laughing at. I don't know if you've noticed these mannequins all over my house. Last night I was just looking through the cheat table trying to find something. I don't, I don't, I don't like experiencing things. Well, I do. I can't word it like that. I'm just so curious, so I'm like, I need to know absolutely everything I want to know right now. And I found this cursed mannequin. There's a female version and there's a male version, and this is what they look like. You can add hats to them, you can add full outfits, whatever you want to do. Just play a little bit of dress up. There's also normal mannequins, so you can use those too, but <laughs> if you want a good laugh, I would 100% go with the cursed mannequin. I'm not really sure how to get either of them. I'm assuming Emily has something to do with it because she's, you know, the, the token fashion lady in the valley. I read on the Stardew Valley Discord server that the cursed mannequins move around your house. So I decided to place one down and go to sleep and see what happened and if it actually would move around your house. But instead of it moving, I went to sleep I heard a little strange noise. I woke up and I was clothless. I was in my drawers, in my pajamas. And I walk over to the mannequin and then I just walked over to the mannequin and it was wearing my clothing. It just stole the clothes straight off of my body. And I can confirm that they do move around. I placed all of these in a straight line and they somehow ended up all around while I was sleeping, trying to test a few things. On top of that, they can change rooms completely. They're, they're, this was, this was a completely different room. They changed the floor, they changed the wallpaper. I'm pretty sure this painting was still up, but it did not look like this. I'm curious to see if they have any other crazy or weird interactions. Oh my God, what did it do this time? Ooh, ooh, what did it do? It was just shaking. Oh my God, it's next to my child. That's so creepy, it literally heard me talking. If anyone knows where to find them, uh, that would be lovely if you would let me know because I am definitely going to, to need to put these in my actual world. This is just simply a, another funny feature that I needed to include because Concerned Dave is just a genius. So another thing that I absolutely need to share and talk about is the whole mastery system. I do specifically wanna talk about the combat mastery because there are some really cool things that I've been enjoying messing around with. I absolutely cannot wait to actually use these in game but there is this little door at the bottom of the woods um don't mind that it's snowing it turned winter and then it got too bright for my eyes so i just changed the season but once you max all of your skills out getting level 10 on absolutely every single skill you are able to come through this door and there's a little note in this corner which says my dear lumi if you're reading this note you found the secret room i've prepared for you within these walls are tips recipes and even some of my most cherished tools all the very best from the many happy years i spent in the valley by coming this far you'll have proven that that you possess the skill and wisdom to make good use of these powerful secrets. I hope my discoveries help you in your journey to making Colonel Farm a shining star of the whole world. Make me proud, Grandpa. And right in the center here, there is this little experience bar that says the final path. And each time you fill the experience bar, you get one star. Then you get to choose one of the masteries you want to acquire, and they have some really cool stuff for you. I haven't really dived into any of these really, only the combat mastery, specifically the trinkets, because again, I was looking through the cheat table and I found a bunch of really cool things and I was really confused about them until I came into this room and saw that this was a thing. So at the bottom here, it says unlocks a new equipment slot for trinkets. Trinkets can be found while adventuring and grant special powers. So I don't know the exact way that you get these experience points. The, the way that I did it was using this, this book of stars that um, gains experience in all of your skills. As you can see, I'll just use a book here and the experience bar went up a little tiny bit. I'm assuming you'll also get some experience just by doing everyday tests. So these trinkets, I, I put them in a big chest because big chest, they basically just give you some cool variation of a power up in the mines. This first one is called the fairy box. It summons a level two companion that heals you in combat situations. So basically if I take damage every so often, the fairy will just heal me up a little bit. It is also super, super cute. So it only heals you when, like I said, you are in a combat situation. As you can see, my health is isn't completely full and she's not healing me. I'm not sure what level two means. I don't know if there's a way to like level her up. If you die a lot, 
in the mines. Um, it might be good to have this this girl around you to to give you some buffs so you don't pass away and die. Then we have my favorite of of the entire bunch, um, the frog companions. So all it says on the description is it summons a hungry frog companion. And when I read that, I, I was a little confused because most of these trinkets are, are really precise in their description. They come in a bunch of colors, yellow, brown, void, blue, green, green, and blue. So it's just, he's a little innocent frog. He's not doing any harm. I don't even want to describe what he does. I'm, I'm just going to show you. He just Yoshi gulps enemies. It doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter anything. It can be a mummy, it can be a serpent, it can be a slime, he just eats them. He does take a little bit to digest. I'm not sure if it, it varies depending on what type of enemy it is, but it, it seems like it's, it's around the same time. But honestly, like, for being a little frog, this is this is a great advantage. I mean, if you're just getting messed up by one enemy in the mines, you just pop this guy out and he'll He'll eat it. This is the little yellow frog. We have the brown frog, which does not look brown. He's definitely like a like a dark green. The blue green frog, which I think this is my favorite color. I really like that one. This over here is just the simple green one. You know, classic can never go wrong with the green buddy. And then there's the blue frog, which I think is also really nice. I think my favorite ones are probably the blue green one and th this just normal blue frog. And now we have another little companion with us. We have the parrot egg which also summons a level two parrot companion who grants you a medium chance to find gold coins when slaying monsters. It is a little bit of a strange descriptor to call something medium, but just kill some dudes and there is a chance that you will get some gold. So it seems like the amount of coins you get varies. I'm not sure if it varies depending on the enemy, but I feel like with the smaller enemies, I've seen a smaller amount of coins and with like the the more difficult ones like that serpent right there i just got 500 gold and i just looked at the the parrot egg again and found out what it means by medium chance to find gold i'll probably go over it at the end of this section but uh i believe the trinkets have different stats. The next one is the Magic Quiver, which if you've seen any of the 1.6 teasers before the update came out, this was on the, the big one with all of the, the new features that Concerned Ape released. So the Magic Quiver shoots a magic arrow at nearby enemies every one to two seconds, dealing 24 to 29 damage. This one for me, I think is like a tiny bit lackluster. It is kind of OP. You don't really gotta, gotta do much. If there's a monster near you that you don't, ooh, I'm fishing. If there's a monster near you that you don't want near you, you can just chill you just you just kind of stand there <laughs> and and let the quiver do its magic and the next one is similar it is the ice rod which shoots an orb of ice every 4.4 seconds freezing any enemies in its path for three seconds this one isn't as punchy as the quiver because it only happens every 4.4 seconds but it's kind of nice it'll shoot out one orb and it'll freeze any enemy that it comes in contact with which if you're if you're getting swarmed Again, this is kind of OP. And then we have the Basilisk Ball, which makes you immune to debuffs. I'm just gonna stand here. I'll take the damage, but I don't get lit up. I don't get that little yellow debuff. I forget what it's called, but I don't get it. The Basilisk Ball, although a little bit boring because I mean, it isn't anything fancy visually. You don't get like a little little guy to, to be your companion. It, it's really nice. Any slimes that might get in your way and stop you from moving will no longer do that. Any of these flamey boys can't light you up. It probably won't be my go-to because I do like the flashiness. I, I really like the frog. That, that'll probably be the one that I run the most. And finally, there is one last trinket, but it doesn't have any, you know, practical use, I would say. It is the magic hair gel. You might've noticed my hair changing colors a few times throughout this video, and it is because of the magic hair gel trinket. It's Says, your hair shimmers with all the colors of a prismatic shard and that is precisely what it does no more magic cowboy hat for me we're just gonna run the magic hair gel all the time like halfway through that segment i said that we would talk about something at the end of this section and yes so um uh, maybe i should have read so the anvil that you get from combat mastery allows you to reforge trinkets randomizing their stats so right here we have the level two fairy companion let's see if we can get it a higher level yeah, so I got a level four companion. Something that just simply needs to be talked about is the Desert Festival. It is the brand new event in Stardew Valley 1.6 and it takes place across three days. So from the 15th to the 17th, you can come to the Desert Festival. And out of all of Stardew Valley's events, uh, this one is probably the most lively yet. There are so many things to do and a lot of them are really fun and genuinely challenge based, which is something that I've been hoping for for a really long time. Obviously events like the Egg Festival give you a little challenge 
challenge. Little bit of challenge, I'm always beating Abigail into submission. And then you have the Stardew Valley Fair, which has always been my favorite because I felt like there was a lot more to do. But here, the Desert Festival, I haven't fully done it because I just messed around a little bit. It might take the cake for my favorite festival. Starting over here, you, you can bet, you can bet on these little guys. There's also a few more racers. I think there might just be one, Um, it's, it's a dog in a boot, but I can just go up to him and we're gonna root for S-Cargo. You know, slow and steady wins the race. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, that, that poor, that poor snail. On top of that, you can head back here to this shady little Elvis looking dude in the corner and you can give him one calico egg, which is the, the festival currency. It's what you get for doing a bunch of the events and stuff like that. For just one calico egg, you can make it so one of the racers has a really bad race. And of course we have Emily's little clothing event. Oh, she did me dirty. She gave me a green jumpsuit and said, here you go, girl. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with Emily's fashion sense, but I think it is really cool that you get to keep the outfit. Um, She'll give you a new outfit each of the three days. So it'll be a cool way to get some new clothing. Some of the villagers will also come here and sell things for Calico eggs, where you can get the bachelors and bachelorettes weapons, which were previously unobtainable. You could only get them if you use the cheat table, but now you can get them. The best of which is probably the Skull Caverns challenge. It says, welcome to the Skull Cavern challenge. Calico eggs and mysterious Calico statues have appeared throughout the caverns. Your egg rating determines determines the likelihood of finding calico eggs. Egg rating increases every five levels down, as well as whenever you activate a calico statue. But be careful, the calico statues will invoke various strange and dangerous effects. So it's basically just the skull caverns with maybe just a tiny bit of challenge, depending on how far you get down. You will get a bunch of calico eggs from Gil, depending on how low you get down. And you can also take on some of Marlin's challenges as well to get even more eggs. I don't want to go through all of it because honestly, there is so much. The festival is so insane. You can get a bunch of cool things from him. The traveling cart lady, of course, is always here and you have this little guy who questions you on the daily over here. I'm not really sure what I expected the festival to be. I theorized about probably a 4th of July one or a New Year's one because of the fireworks in the game files. And while the fireworks are now in the game, I was right about them coming to the game. I was so totally off. I never really imagined that Concerned Ape would use the desert because we're, we're the only ones that come here. But I guess that's precisely why he wanted to do it. So those are all of my favorite features that I have already come across in 1.6. I know for sure that there is so much more stuff, but I still need to explore a little bit more dive into the game, maybe even watch some other videos about it. I don't know. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new about the update or even just enjoyed watching. Just want to say thank you guys so much again for 100k. Like I said, it's a dream and I love, 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 love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. It'll make me so happy. And remember, Lumi's always got you. Bye.